Welcome to Should You Watch This with the Popcorn Priest, the weekly podcast where movie enthusiasts, ex-movie theater projectionists, new and old friends take the time to talk about a movie that we just watched and answer that very question, should or shouldn't you watch this? We're continuing our special 12-part movie review breakdown of the Alien and Predator franchise in chronological order. I'm your host, Chris Compton. Let's get into our review and breakdown of part three of our series with Alien from 1979. Some of you may have figured out we're not home yet. We're only halfway there. Mother's interrupted the course of our journey. Why? She's programmed to do that should certain conditions arise. They have. Like what? Seems she has intercepted a transmission of unknown origin. She got us up to check it out. What kind of a transmission? Acoustical beacon that uh, repeats at intervals of 12 seconds. SOS? I don't know. Human? Joining me today is reoccurring guests Angry Dane and Hello. Dr. Dare. Hello. Welcome back to the show, guys. It's good to be here. Welcome to Popcorn Trivia. I've got the first section of this is, is basically some casting what ifs and then some just some straight numbers that I found. So who do you think turned down the role of Captain Dallas? Harrison Ford. Yes. Did you look ah, that up? No. Are you serious? No. No. <laughs> I'm like way. looking at it right nice. here. I'm like, oh my yeah, gosh, you bro. got it right. And then uh, Ridley that, Scott Henry stated Dane. that in casting the role of Ripley, it ultimately came down to two actresses Sigourney Weaver and who else? Jane don't, Fonda. Don't look at the screen. He probably already did. I didn't look at the screen, but I can't think of anyone. I'm. I don't know what the late seventies had. It's crazy. Meryl Streep. Those were the two. You know what though? I could see that she kind of has that badass. I'll kill you. Yeah. The only reason why it probably wasn't Meryl Streep because she was mourning the loss of her partner John Castle at the time of casting. So, Bad face. Sorry, Meryl. Thanks to the death of John, we got the birth of Ripley. With what, Scorny Weaver. What was Meryl Streep in? Or it was like Kramer versus Kramer around that time ish. Like, is that kind of the version of Meryl Streep it would have been? Yeah, she looked. I mean, she was still pretty young, really thin, and looked, she's pretty looked, tall. Yeah, I mean, she played. I watched a documentary with my wife about the lady who cooked. She made oh, yeah, uh, Julia Child. Julia Child. Yeah, so that's kind of who I imagined was was playing, yeah. but. So the Xenomorph has how many minutes of screen time? Speaking of the Jaws, you know, in space. Like three, four, five? Yeah, it's, three minutes. <laughs> it's four minutes of total screen time. And it doesn't make its first appearance until an hour into the movie, which is awesome. Yeah, we'll talk about this a ton, but the movies and the Prometheus ones, those that and whatever the second one was with Covenant, yeah. they're so similar. They're on the ship, the crew, yeah. the alien. This is a thousand times better. Why didn't they copy the way they build tension, the way it's just... I mean, it's the same director, which is crazy. Yeah, like just laziness, I guess. There's no buildup, too much exposition. Sorry, Ridley. I think Dr. it's because Derrick they don't have the lazy. same... Res they had to work within all these restrictions back in the day because they didn't have the ability to realistically pull stuff off and... I think it was like the, what do they call it? The golden handcuffs or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. But like, I, exactly. think, I think having to work through those restrictions and limitations ultimately made, like the solutions they come up with produce a better movie. 100%. 100%. Original cut of this movie ran three hours and 12 minutes. I want to see that cut. I mean, I kind of do, but I also think it would just be really boring in some parts. But it would be beautiful to watch. But I think the pacing... But like we saw that really deleted good. scene where she goes in and burns all the. Oh yeah, we did watch I mean, the director's cut, which was I think a couple minutes longer. Like that was the most very... significant scene that was cut, though. Right? Yeah, the rest yeah. I think were good cuts, and that might have been a good cut. But that scene like blew my mind. 
we also got to see the scene where uh, I don't know the other female in the cast. Oh yeah, slaps Rip Ripley, mm-hmm. and that was that was an intense scene that yeah. got cut. That I lady did that. great. She was great. In the it. scene where she's talking to the captain when he's in the wherever he's at in the shit up the vents. Oh yeah, and she's like her tension keeps rising and she, she starts getting really cr- just freaking out. She's awesome. It it was awesome. So this Nostromo is supposed to be 800 feet long while the craft she's towing is a mile and a half long. I don't remember. What? It's supposedly... It, it, it's like two pieces, like a trailer. Yeah, so Ripley says it in the first of the show that she's, they're, they're towing something. And I don't. I didn't pick up on that, but apparently this ship is. I didn't a, either. A towing vessel, as well as a mining vessel. I wonder if it's like they're mining, so that are in the. I don't know. A mile and a half in long. the trailer it or is whatever. Insane. The shots are very Star Wars esque, and it looks huge. But I thought it was all one, and then they keep coming out of these sub ships. They're like right in the middle. Where Where's the Nostromo at? It's just huge. Hmm. I don't. I mean, you see a part of it when. The opening shots of the film where you, those weird tall like spires. Almost. Is that what they're towing? I don't. I don't know. Because that's I, bigger I, than eight hundred feet. Like I said, I didn't. I didn't get that from. But in the dialogue, she says they're towing another vessel. So anyway, hmm. uh, how many eggs did they produce for the chamber inside the downed spacecraft in the derelict? A lot. Five. They made 135 alien <laughs> eggs. That's so many. Like, you'd think now, I mean, now they would just build a couple of them and then, like you said, five, and then just green screen the rest or whatever. Yeah. So I've got a couple, of, maybe we should do this first or last, I'm not sure, but I was really taken aback by the documentary, and I still think about it all the time, of H.R. Geiger and, and how he would work and design. And he would bring in like human bones and like weird stuff to build the creature design. So I looked up a bunch of this stuff. Some of it's food related. Some of it's, it's just basically all the practical effects of the, of the creatures and some of the set design. So among some of the ingredients of the alien costume are plasticine and Rolls Royce engine parts, as well as real spines for, uh, snakes the snake spine for the for the guy that the chest burster mm. which is insane yeah that sounds awesome the dead face hugger the ash autopsies was made using fresh shellfish four oysters and a sheep kidney to recreate the internal organs filming had to be done quickly because the organic material would go bad very fast under the studio lights can you imagine the tss- yeah how hot Ew, and gross. stinky. Apparently, yeah. this there was like a jo- not not a joke, but a running theme that they were f- they were passing out because of the smell and because of the the suits. It was super hot. They didn't have any kind of air conditioning. You know, now you see all these behind the scenes, and they got these like mm-hmm. fans in there, and everyone's fine. But back then, it was like horrible experience. <laughs> Well, and that's, this is a good example of practical effects just being better. Again, you look at the two movies, not as many practical effects in the first two. And this, the pra- when they rip the dude's head off, oh all the milk and all uh, the little giant boba string, it just, it was disgusting. Yeah. Disgusting. Yeah, so the inside of the alien eggs as seen by crane were composed of real organic material scott used fresh cattle hearts and stomachs that were obtained from a local butcher the egg tube of the face hugger was sheep intestines the design team tried several things but found out that organic material simply provided the desired wet and gooey look that they were hoping for it probably saved them like a ton of time rather than trying to make it yeah, out of other yeah. stuff and then make it all shiny and wet and right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just go go get some yeah. waste products at the butcher. Well, and to to Doctor Dare's point of the ash's head, it contains spaghetti, cheap caviar, and onion rings. I mean, how that's it's it's yeah. Uh, 
we just can't forget to bring up the cut where his head <laughs> looks ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, they maybe that's my like, beefs. I've got it in beefs. Okay. okay. Ironically, we're talking about real beef, but that's yeah. a popcorn Movie beef. beef. Yeah. Yep. Geiger's first attempt at an egg had the top with one long slit across it. When he presented it to Scott, the department head burst out laughing as it looked far too much like a vagina. Of course. The slit was duplicated at 90 degrees to make it more like an X, which satisfied everyone. Now it's an alien vagina. <laughs> I mean, not to be creepy, but just think about it. It's, it's, everything about the design is so, and they toned down all the sexual stuff because Geiger was like, pushed it way too far. And the studio execs are like, hey, uh, can we have less vaginas on the ship? Is that cool? (laughs) Yeah, that was his thing. So here's another part that's related to all this food and, and animal parts. So to stop patrons from barfing in his washrooms, a theater owner in Texas cut out the entire chestburster scene from his print, leaving audiences to see Kane's funeral right after his arrival in sickbay and confused as to why the crew was apparently hunting down the facehugger again. Dumb. What an a-hole. Well, (laughs) I mean, you see... Apparently people were just barfing at all times. Yeah, you see grosser stuff like that on just normal TV... I think people in the 70s were sheltered. Yeah, but they're like yeah. 10 years from like not even seeing a toilet on a movie or a TV show. There was no toilets? Uh, like not no shared beds? Early, yeah. Like yeah. There was at some point where- They where just like, wouldn't show a toilet? A man wasn't wearing an undershirt once on it. Like, like in the 50s and 60s, I mean. like That's insane. Yeah, no wonder they were just- they're barfing and going hysterical. He should have given out barf bags instead of cutting the movie, though. Our boomers are such freaking amazing people. Sorry. <laughs> tough. They're tough. I don't know. With the demographics that I can see, I don't know how many boomers are listening to the pod, but we we welcome all ages. Yeah, toughen up, though. <laughs> <laughs> so... I've got th- that was all the food and all the the numbers that I could find that I thought were interesting. But anything you guys want to talk about? I, I've got a bunch of really interesting production, like facts about the production that I thought because I've seen this many, many, many times, and I just didn't. These are the things that I wasn't aware of. I I'm curious about the miniatures and the spaceships and stuff. Like, what year did the first Star Wars movie come out? 77. So you had that, you had uh Space Odyssey or whatever the Were there a lot of movies before this that had that that kind of stuff in it? Yeah, I mean, the the reason why this movie got made was because of Star Wars and Fox wanted uh Lucas to make another film and he's like it's going to take me 3 years to do the sequel to Star Wars and so they were trying to push something out. And this script was there, but it was way too like gory and horror, you know. So, but they kind of were like, "Well, this is all we've got." So, wow, that's I, I, Star Wars is what helped this movie get made. Cool. That's so cool. <laughs> no, I can definitely see that. You, I remember Angry Dane and myself. We were blown away by the blue laser lights that were kind of hovering above oh, yeah. the yeah. egg the egg chamber. Yeah. So I looked this up, and the blue lights that were used in the egg chamber were borrowed from The Who. The band was... <laughs> no joke. The band was testing out the lasers for their stage show in the soundstage next door. That's really cool. So they That's walked awesome. over and like, eh, so cool if we... <laughs> I don't even know what... I don't know who's in The Who. I don't know, but, but I doubt they got fooled again. <laughs> uh, Ridley Scott did all the handheld camera work himself. What? Yeah, he he was the guy. He did it all. So I'm sure he doesn't do that anymore because he's like 75. But he did it all himself. The face hugger was planned to be painted green. But Dan O'Bannon seeing the unpainted face hugger on set and noting how inventive its human flesh tone color was argued for it to remain as is. 
and it was a great choice. I think that's a great call. A green alien just sounds tropey. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, until this thing, that was people's men from Mars with antennas and yeah. green and big heads with big eyes and yeah, like Marvin the Martian man. Yeah, Everyone, yeah. That's what's what it was. There's a ton of stories about how things became and, and how it morphed because of different problems they had on the set or Ryan or called it man. Yeah. <laughs> so the here's another one. The conceptual artist Rob Cobb. Or excuse me, Rob Cobb, Ron Cobb, who Rob came Cobb. up with the idea that the alien should bleed acid. This came about when Dan O'Bannon ran into a wall with the screenplay and how to handle the last half of the movie. He needed a good reason for why the crew members don't just shoot the thing and kill it for uh, and kill it, but still not make it an indestructible monster that can't be killed. The acid blood was the idea that solved the problem. So cool. Is that why they didn't shoot it and kill it? Yeah, because they remember when yeah, they tried down and when Ash tried to the cut deck. cut the uh, face hugger off. Yeah, it squirted all over. I was not paying attention to that. I was like, oh, they can't shoot it because they're inside a spaceship, and if they shoot things, it'll but break yeah, except everything. they had tons of fire. There's a beef to me. Like you just well, can't but that have makes that sense. much fire is better than good bullets. Yeah, so. and and then it's not maybe going to bleed if you burn it. Hmm. It'll yeah. Just I yeah. It'll just I mean, I just cook. think fire is like the scariest thing in space. Like they don't, they didn't want pencil shavings from the lead in case it sparked a little fire. Like they're terrified of fire in space. Yeah, I don't know. Another, I'm not a freaking astronaut. <laughs> Another problem they had was how do they get the alien on the ship? And the guy, one of the writers came up with the idea is the alien F's one of them. And it was kind of a joke, but then they're like, oh yeah, let's do that. And that's how H.R. Geyer came up with the face hugger. He, he need, they needed that in order to get the thing inside the body. The face hugger is equally as scary as the alien to me. I think it's way more scary. It's terrifying, man. It, Cause it's like, it's violating you. And the scene get, where and they, where they touch it and it, tightens its little tail like that uh, freaks me out man it looks so real and all the all the other ones that are cg with the newer ones it just doesn't look as cool the puppetry it just it just looks so creepy with the bony like, well and without that i don't think half-life would have been as cool like yeah. those face huggers were terrifying in the game oh gosh to preserve the shock value of the alien's appearance no production images of of it were ever released, not even to the author who wrote the novelization of the film. Hmm. And I feel like we were talking about how older movies did this. Like everything now, they show the trailer, even yeah. if it's two minutes, two and a half minutes, you see everything. Yeah, it sucks. You're right. Trailers used to be way better. I don't think we should have a five minute long trailer that spoils every punchline and every plot line. Like, I, I don't know if they just assume we're dumb, but nine times out of ten, you see something. Then when you're watching the movie, your brain's like, oh, shit, and you connect the dots, and you know what's going to happen. Do you think they do, it's like, market dumb. research where they know that it's better if they reveal most of it? I, I feel like there's a reason. These, I'm, I'm there, sure. There must be some reason like that, right? Yeah, but it's stupid. <laughs> It's well, a stupid reason. We're not, it's not, movies used to be a niche thing. There used to be fewer people. But as everything becomes more mainstream, as more people do, you just have to be more broad and dumb. Broad strokes are terrible for enthusiasts, I think. Yeah. The chest burster scene, her name is Veronica Cartwright. Is Her name is Lambert in the film. She screamed. The film? I screwed up there. This is the best part of the podcast. <laughs> she screams when blood splatters on her. Her screaming and horrific reaction were genuine. Just as the shocked responses of the other cast members, they purposely weren't told how much blood would come out and which way it would splatter on purpose, knowing that they would have the best responses. And it shows. Awesome. I wonder how many cameras they... They probably had multiple cameras, right? During that, when they shot that, then if they wanted, how do you do that? Because when you see the cameras with, if you had, the other angles, well, and if 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 
there were some lines that no one crossed. Mm. You'd be good. Well, there's a myth that, that it was a one shot take, but there was actually two shots. And when, when you see the blood hit his shirt and it like kind of pushes oh, against his shirt. Yeah. They could the guy who was the puppeteer couldn't get through the first time and so it was a mistake and they had to film it again and so all this like animal blood and material it was stinky and and so they had to film it a, a second time. So there's only two takes but then they cut the shirt a little bit and got it to come out all the way but but they used both shots. Then. But Ridley yeah. liked it so much cuz it was like it was struggling to get out of him and it made it even more terrifying the theme of greatness i think is you take these little problems that come up nothing ever goes smoothly and integrate them creatively or solve these problems creatively i think that's such a theme in all of this in rambo and this i i mean at work for me it's a huge thing to take these problems and turn them into things that are just iconic agreed <laughs> well i mean or not <laughs> <laughs> or or maybe other people just do it right the first time and I'm and I'm a total loser but I love that that's a philosophy for me. Okay, here here's this this stuff that I found out or researched about the Jodorowsky's Dune. So, this is long but I think it's really cool. Dan O'Bannon, who's the cr- creator of the alien, it was his idea, came from his experiences on two other projects. He had worked as a writer and special effects supervisor on John Carpenter's Dark Star from 1974, Hmm. a science fiction comedy that started out as a student project but got turned into a feature film. Halfway during the production of the movie, O'Bannon thought the movie's premise would work much better as a horror movie, so he started working on a script called Star Beast. Dark Star was a commercial failure, but it was seen by Chilean French director Alejandro Jodorowsky, who had acquired the rights to Frank Herbert's Dune. Jodorowsky invited O'Bannon, O'Bannon to help him with the book's ambitious adaptation. So O'Bannon sold all of his belongings and moved to Paris to work on the movie with wow. Dune. While briefly working on the ill fated project, he encountered influential artists such as Chris Foss, Ron Cobb, and Jean Girard, who is a.k.a. Mobius. Mobius, yeah. H.R. Hmm. Geiger and their unique styles, because they were all working on Jodorowsky's Dune. When the Dune, Jodorowsky's Dune, fell through due to lack of funding, O'Bannon took the creative team he worked on his Star Beast movie, and using much of the designs already created for Dune, Scott, one of the few who had also seen and liked Dark Star, agreed to direct... It has since been said that the Alien movie became the movie that Jodorowsky's Dune was supposed to be. And there's this... Like, you have to watch that documentary if you're into this stuff. I think it's like yeah. 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's amazing. And you, Angry Dane and I talk about this all the time, that there's this fabled... It's not a fable, it's real. There's two copies of this Bible that... Jodorowsky created to sell the movie. Yeah, it was like to pitch to the studios, right? Yeah, and everyone, all these directors that any of the directors now who have seen it talk about it all the time, and and they use how it's like a Bible, yeah, so well, reference. I, I think the yeah. whole documentary opens. Who's the guy? The guy who directed Drive. Oh, I can't. Oh, remember I don't his remember name. his name either. Yeah. But the whole documentary opens with him saying, "Like I was at Cannes and I ran into Jodorowsky and." He's like, do you want to watch Dune? And he's like, I thought it never got made. And he's like, no, come to my house. I'll show it to you. And he oh. looks at the thing and he's like, he says, and I saw it and it is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's so amazing, God man. Damn it. And it's all based on Geiger's um, book too. It spawned from the Necronomicon, which has all these insane, Im- disturbing imagery and finally, the, like the studios were like, we can't use any of that in our show. And, and Scott's like, I'm sorry, we got to use this guy. Probably because he saw that crazy Bible. And then they finally said, okay, but you got to tone it back. You got to tone it down a bit. Ahead of his time. Yeah. Someone needs to mass produce that thing. I'd buy it if it cost $200. I think I would I pay, would buy, I'd pay quite a yeah, bit. I would probably pay Two to three hundred dollars. Guaranteed, what would happen is they'd make ten thousand copies, 
They'd sell it for $500. It would sell out before it's even available to the general public. And then we'd see it on StockX for fucking 10000 And I would just be really angry. <laughs> yeah. That's what would happen. So We, we should do a whole other separate podcast. Like maybe after this uh, Predator alien thing on that Dune document. Uh, Yodorowsky's Dune we documentary. Should. I don't think I'm smart enough to participate in that. That's amazing stuff. You can. It's really good. I'll make childish comments. Absolutely, and I'll and I'll do my best Yodorowsky impersonation. Okay, I'm definitely in. he's so he's so great. I love how he it, it's awesome. It's, We're, I'm gonna keep talking about it if we don't shift. <laughs> so this might bleed into some of the beefs, but what did you guys feel about the water pouring out of out of the like engine room? I'm conflicted. I. <laughs> I am too, because it's just like, where are we? Are we? It didn't feel like a ship anymore. All of a sudden, there's just so much, so many chains and so much water dripping everywhere. It it was weird, but there was a part of me that's thinking, well, you're on this enormous ship. You've got to create some sort of an atmosphere. There's probably humidity collecting. Like, I don't know. In my brain, I was like, yeah, there's a way to explain this. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think there's a good <laughs> a good way to explain it. But it was such a a great atmosphere. You know, the way they used water in Jurassic Park, the ripples, the, the sounds of the drops, it it was perfect, but it, it doesn't make any sense to me. So apparently the producers were pissed about it, and they kept telling him, we can't have water dripping all over the place and, and enormous chains hanging from the ceiling. And why is it so t- tall? And all, all the, they just didn't get it, and... Ripley just said, nope, this is what we're doing. And he stuck to his guns. And I that's love it. Why it. And it just added to the atmospheric. It's just chilling. It adds in there. more depth for sure. The sound design in this is super underrated because. It's the horror part of the sci fi horror. It's right? really good. Yeah. Yeah. The sheen of the water on things is better than a flat metal surface. I mean, it was, it was awesome, but I don't get it. I don't get what. And the dude rolls in right before he dies. Like, if they're always close to that water, he looks like hot trash. Like, he hasn't showered in two weeks. And he just puts his face up and, like, rinses his face off. Oh, like so terrifying. Oh, yeah. I it, love it, those guys, by the way. The the, the two, like, the, double work, my shares. the grunts. <laughs> yeah, that should have been the tagline of this movie. Alien, colon, double my shares. Double my shares. Because that's all they talked about. Was like, I'm not doing that unless you double my shares. You guys yeah. are getting double shares. And then Ripley keeps yelling at him, we're all getting the same amount, you <laughs> idiot. Yes. <laughs> it's so great. Again, those are there's another example of they tried to do the same thing in the prequels that they made way later, and it just came off as whiny bullshit. Like, it didn't add anything. It just made me not like the movie. Oh, in this, like, I yeah. loved it, dude. I loved it. In Prometheus, the two dudes who first They're get like infected, redhead, right? The, like, redhead. And the, the guy with like the mohawk and the yeah. one with the glasses. Yeah, I whose hated arms get both broken. of those characters. I was excited <laughs> that he had to be burned. Yes. Like I didn't want these any two, of these guys. I to loved die. them. And so I I did some research on this too, and th- I think this is why this is so good, is because much of the dialogue was developed through improvisation. Yeah, it so felt it might, really natural. They might have done some of it, and then they uh, like fine tuned it, but it just felt like we were. You know, flies on the wall of this yeah. crew. They and just, the shots. There were a bunch of shots where there's dialogue where they're the camera is lower and looking up. The the all of the really angles cool. were way better than it just felt really static and like I'm watching a movie in the other ones. You just kind of can see everyone, everyone's in the same focus and everyone is the same size. And this it was really interesting angles that, that weren't made you more involved, I guess. I don't know. Well, that scene when they go back into like the medical bay or whatever, after I think it's after the face hugger has released and they yeah, know where it is. Yeah, it's that super it's, low angle. Yes. yeah, so great, dude. And talk about building tension. It's e- you just put the camera on the ground and it made that whole scene terrifying. Like that little bastard could just run in front. The slower, it was freaky. Well, in the pacing, like the way the whole movie opens. Dude, where, dude I was just about to say the yeah, opening yeah. is like there's no dialogue for like eight minutes. Yeah, no you, one's even you, awake, and the camera's just, just wandering through the ship, right? Yeah, and you get to hear all the the lights kind of flickering on the little 
machine noises as they come oh. to life. It's just amazing. The little just so clickings. crazy. The sound on it is so good. It reminds me, I went to the theater to see the new Star Wars. Or no, not the new Star Wars, obviously I saw that. But the new Star Trek. And when I was in there, all of a sudden when the ship comes over and you hear yeah. it, beep, 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 beep. It was, it was that, that type of sound where it's just so iconic, so, I mean, so it perfect. Hook, it hooks you. Yeah, it does. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, that, I, lo- I love the opening scene. It's, it's just really great. Uh, the last thing, let's see. I have two, two more trivia points that I wanted to touch on and then whatever else you guys want to talk about. But the one thing that I've always, because I'm a graphic designer, I love the, the logo design and the branding of this Wayland Utani brand, the company name. Is it Wayland Utani now, or was it just Wayland at this point? It's Wayland Utani. It's Wayland Utani now, but it bef- wasn't in Prometheus before. It was Wayland. Yeah. So one common story is that Wayland and Utani were the names of two of Ridley Scott's neighbors whom he didn't <laughs> like. However, this isn't the case. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Ron Cobb, the designer of the movie, came up with the name Waylon Utani. Waylon Utani, for instance, is almost a joke, but not quite. He says, I wanted to imply that poor old English is back on its feet and has united with the Japanese, who have taken over the building of spaceships the same way they have now with cars and super tankers. In coming up with a strange company name, I thought of British's Ley- Leyland and Toyota, but we couldn't use Leyland Toyota in the film. So changing one letter gave me Waylon Utani, and that was the Japanese neighbor of mine. Isn't that insane? It, it's so cool. All it's the such a alien great story. franchise, we, the all of the logos and design for that corporation is amazing. Well, it's just all just the beautiful. little. I, I remember seeing when they put the, their helmets on, and the you said the filigree. Filigree. That's all over. Yeah. It's just super yeah. intricate detail that you see. It's just so awesome. Well, even the little Tupperware mugs. Yes. That have yeah. Like the crest or whatever on it on them. Correct. <laughs> yeah. And the patches. Everyone has. They're not the same uniforms, but someone you know the Dallas has that cool jacket and it has some badging on it. The other guys have their like, you know, workers. Uniform yeah. stuff and it has it on. It's just well, it's just not the same too. They modify the logo everywhere. It feels like it was designed as opposed to a lot of movies where they have some corporation, even like the Umbrella Corp. It's mm. always the exact same shit. All right, my last trivia point is, and I I'd heard about this a lot. How the reception of this movie, there was just people barfing and crazy stuff happening, especially when. Ash's head gets bashed in. Um, but the first test screening of the movie was hampered by sound issues and only got a lukewarm reception. But by the second screening, the makers had their first indication that the movie was as scary as they had hoped. Reportedly, attendants screamed in terror, and the wife of 20th Century Fox's president, Alan Ladd, got so scared that she refused to leave her house for over a day. Several of the crew members later attended screenings where audience responses surpassed their wildest predictions, including people leaving the first row and requesting places farther away from the screen. <laughs> like, Pe- that's better. Yeah. Like, uh, can I be in the back? <laughs> uh, people yelling at the characters not to do certain things. Yes. Cinema personnel passing out. People fleeing to toilets and stuffing the speakers there with napkins to drown out the sound. And restrooms littered with vomit. Like, I, it's I I worked at a movie theater, and I've seen vomit a, a lot and a lot of weird smells. This would have been insane to be a, like to witness this. Like I applaud them for getting this reaction, but again, <laughs> what kind of just children were viewing this? Like, it's just it. That's how our society has changed from the... I don't think we man, can understand. Like, we can't. Really yeah, I can't. I just can't. Like, if you saw two people kiss, were you like, oh, like, oh, no. Like, well, yeah. What? I mean, thinking about Star Trek, the the original series <laughs> where he kisses... A black uh, woman. Yeah. Like, what's her, what's her name? Um, Uhura. 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 It was like this 
hugely horrible, like controversial thing. And, and, uh, Gene Roddenberry was like, Oh no, this is, this is no big deal. But people were just, just judging them. Yeah. We should I'm judge judging them. the seventies, but like they also did like Jesus Christ superstar came out in 73 that's and true. that's like, I, I mean, that's pretty progressive as far as like taking the point of Judas and I mean, going against big religion. It seems like by 79, we'd been through the disco. We've been through. That's true. Through a bunch. How are we still so caught up on this shit? I don't get it. But I bet like the mainstream of everyday suburban people weren't into any of that other stuff. Like, Speaking of Yoda, the Dune documentary, yeah. like the movies they show that he made prior to the, that project, like they're batshit crazy insane. They're weird. Mm. They're bizarre. But no one was watching them, really. Yeah, no, nobody. They were just super art house, like just experimental, like he'd show like pictures of like apples for like hours. Or like <laughs> a man <laughs> shitting gold. and Yeah, just The weird. Holy Mountain, we... Uh, an old coworker of mine and I watched it's part of that. Weird. And it's just super weird. Weird cuts it. and stuff. Yeah. I love it. So I don't have any more trivia, but if you guys want to talk about anything, let's do it. Or we get into beefs and I, our ratings. I have one thing I have to talk about. They got the biggest reaction of me more than the scares, more than the thrills was the jump cut from the dummy head. Oh, to, I've got that in beefs. What's Ash's What's the actor's name again? Bilbo Baggins. I don't know his <laughs> name. Well, when Ash is oh, with the jump cut. I don't either. The thing is, is like someone's elbow or something went in front of the camera right before the jump cut. They could have so easily Ryan, used that yeah. to cover it up. Angry Dane is an animator and film editor, so he... Like they could have... It, it would have sold it so much better if they would have had someone's arm kind of back and forth in front of the camera and just yeah cut it with some frames. They kind of like you said they they had it there anyway. They could have yeah. done it. Yeah. It's, it's very easily it could have like, very easily been all the fixed. work they went to to do all this stuff. Yeah. Like that was Dude, to put him like to create it to make it look like his head was in on the floor even though he's underneath. They go through all that trouble and then they can't they have cut a stupid it right. jump cut. Dude. And his like, yeah. his so, face is like like so like Sad and set. Oh, His like dude. eyes look so like a skeleton. And then, and then when all it like, burns, it comes all, back. It all dries. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's so like milky, and like he was gross. a cinnamon roll. <laughs> Just so gross. <laughs> well, and then when they dude. burn him, when they burn him, and the skin like burns off of the face, and it's just like a mannequin. Yeah, I mean, that yes. was really weird. Yes, I kind of liked that scene. I thought it was cool, but not the not the scene you're talking about where they cut from it, a fake head to the one where his 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 it's body's real. popping up through the the floor. Yeah, yeah, that's part of my beefs. Th- those are my only two beefs. I love this movie, but the water, which I understand made it look cooler in the chains, and then the real ash head versus the fake ash head. I mean, I don't have a beef with this scene at all. I just think one of the best scenes was, and again, I'm just comparing it to, to the to prior two, when she's talking to the science officer and he basically tells her to fuck off. Like, it's not, you You don't get to see this. They're in uh, Mother, right in that room. Oh, yeah. And they're talking, all of that dialogue was perfect. I mean, so it, good. it was so it was so good, and they had a they had similar scenes in both the other movies, and you just you just don't care. And in this one, I like wanted to cheer, like yeah, you tell him, like fuck that guy, <laughs> you know, yeah, you're the boss. And it's creepy because you see her walk into that computer room, With the, all the console, lights. yeah, and you don't see Ash, and then all of a sudden he's over yeah. to the left of her, and it's like, whoa, where did you come from, Sidler, crazy yeah. Sidler? That scene was just. It was amazing. I loved that whole interaction. What about the adult diapers from the <laughs> when they're coming out of uh, Dude. stasis? <laughs> or Those are not weird to be diapers. weird, but Sigourney Weaver's figure is a horror movie in and of itself. <laughs> we see you know a lot I mean? of Sigourney Weaver when she gets her suit off and she thinks everything's okay. Yeah, dude, her underwear is like 10 times too small. It's a weird underwear scene. It <laughs> That scene was really weird, man. There's, like that was the maybe I, th- I'm just I think jaded. everyone's beautiful. 
<laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not talking trash, but it just was. <laughs> it it maybe, was awkward. maybe she's not your type. I don't know, but geez, no, I'd hit that man for sure. But <laughs> it, she does have a weird I would, sized like I would. shirt. You have to cut this out. Her, she's super tall, which is, and she's kind of terrifying. I said she looked like her character in where she's blue. What is that? Oh, um, Avatar. She looked like just she was in Avatar. She looks giant, dude. So tall and lanky. That was, scene creeped me out. It it did. And don't forget, I don't think I saw it. I think Ryan and you saw it. Where they don't, for like five minutes, every minute or so, I guess, you see the head of the alien who's curled up sleeping. That was creepy, dude. And no movie's going to take that time. That there's, yeah. they'll sh- he'll they'll, come out immediately. Cut it. Yeah, that whole scene was really cool, and you see it too if you if you're watching it and you're paying attention, you see it up on the chains too. Oh yeah, like oh, it, the camera yeah. pans yeah, he's just swinging. a little bit, and you see him. He's up there like swinging, and, and if you yeah. didn't know, you wouldn't have known he was up there because all the stuff that was going on. It's yeah, really, really cool. So cool. Yeah. Well, any parting thoughts before we get to our rating? I have one quick question for the popcorn priest. I have answers. The deleted scene where it's like uh, they're they're almost like victims to a spider, like pasted to kill the wall. Me. Yeah, kill me. Oh yeah, that was added. <laughs> Is that in? Does the alien do that to people in other movies where it, it like captures them and it has them like plastered to the wall with in stuff? Aliens. Yeah, kay. it does. Yeah, coming up. I just wondered if that idea carried over or since they deleted it if they honestly did away that's with it. the creepiest part of aliens okay. yeah it freaked me out when i saw it it's crazy because you they cut it all out in in this movie but in the next movie you get to see how the and again this is another reason why the alien is so cool this is another part of that creature design where you get to see how they just start taking over whatever space they're in and, and it just starts to look like them they just, yeah. I don't know if it's like they're well, spit. Or I feel like something. they fleshed a lot of that out in the, the prequels, Prometheus and, and those. You saw a lot of that because you were in the ship so long. But Yeah, but those ships, the ship was the design of the derelict ship. The, yeah, but you got to see it like, jockey. Didn't, they, didn't they do that outside the main door to the, yeah, there was some, to the bridge? There was some of that in there, but not as much as you would you did see in this deleted scene yeah. as well as the the base floor where the the queen is in aliens yep thank you for your answers i i think i did a good job you're welcome yeah <laughs> yeah nice work <laughs> um your ratings should we rate i want to, you to rate the movie, and then I also want you to rate it at, compared to the two movies that we've previously viewed. Five out of five stars, and if we're rating, I don't, these I don't three. think you even need to watch the other movies, man. I just don't. They're don't, that bad to you, man. I, I, they're fun, I guess, and I liked watching them with you. Had you never seen any of the other two? I'd seen both. Oh, okay, but I just. This movie is so much better in every single way. Every single way it's better. So, And you don't really learn that much. You get a couple visuals of the other, you know, pupae state or whatever, different stages of the, the aliens. But outside of that and maybe seeing the creators. It's, it's kind of like us. you should just watch episode one, Star Wars A New Hope. And, or not episode one, episode four versus The Force Awakens. It's the... You should watch Rogue movie. One and then A New Hope. Yeah, and then don't you don't need to see Force Awakens because it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same movie. Even though I love watching Star Wars stuff, but me too. It's the same. All right, Angry I, Dane. What do you think, man? Angry Dane. Oh, I give it an A. Y- y- some of the stuff We're using is using letters. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm gonna switch it. I'm up gonna go time. to go to a, like I school like it. grade. It's a Z plus. It's a Z plus. My other ones don't make any sense. It's an A. No, uh, vegetable carrots. Vegetable how, carrots, how many, blue diamonds. How many, uh, what's your scale? Is it a four or five letters? 
It's just like in school. Okay. F, F is F the worst. Is the oh, worst. I'm going to switch to that. I like that. Yeah. Nice. Um, it's an A. And you, but you have to watch it realizing the limitations they're working within. Like, there's a couple shots of the creature that yeah. are kind of laughable, and the shot we described where, with Ash, where you can like see that it's a cool helmet on top of a man, like a skinny guy in yeah. a suit. <laughs> I read, I read that Ridley Scott was very, he was careful to only show it from the sides as much as possible because the, he knew that that was going to happen. The one shot I think they should have modified or framed differently was. When he attacks the woman with the short hair, I forget her the character name. Lambert. Lambert. Yeah. When he stands up. Yeah. Because it doesn't move like an insect. It just yeah. looks like a guy who's like standing d- up. <laughs> yes. And yeah. it was very like, <laughs> that's like a guy in leather pants. Yes. B- but if you if you kind of go Gimpy into on. it realizing they had their limitations, it's it's way better than the other two that we've watched so far. Yeah. Honestly, the fact it was made in seventy nine really shits on the prequels dude oh yeah it makes the prequels so much worse considering how much more technology they had the budget was huge those movies should have been better i i liked them when we watched them but watching this and thinking about it makes me more and more frustrated and being able to see it in you know blu-ray 1080p or 4k Mm -hmm. it makes it seem like it was made today because it looks so good, yeah. But it was it's so old. It's like watching Jaws when you I have the 4K version of that. And it's it's like a period piece. It's insane. It looks yep. so good and it holds up. Yeah, it's there's like zero movie. tension in the other ones, man. Yeah, I give it a golden bucket for sure. I think it's so good, and I I it's obviously better than the other two. I think. I hold movies in a higher regard than most people because I just love going to the movies and just forgetting about my troubles. So I think the other two are really good, but definitely not as good as this one. As this one. No. It's, it's the well, best. Well, I will say, too, we're watching them chronologically, right? Based I don't on think I, you should. Yeah, you should. I don't think you I should. I think you should watch this one first. You should watch I this agree. first because if you know the face hugger, if you have been introduced to some of this. It ruins some of it. So I think, I think you should watch this first. You should watch them in the order they were made. Yeah. Probably. I think chronologically, we'll probably have a better mm-hmm. idea when we're done with this crazy. Chron is time. I think when people say watch them chronologically, it's within the world of the story yeah. that you're telling. Yeah, I don't so know how to we say are watching we're them chronologically. watching chronologically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, I, but I also think that by release date, I think we'll have a better idea of what I think you should probably do is watch Alien, Aliens, then Prometheus, yeah. then Alien Covenant, and then the the rest. Because I, I think that the third and fourth Alien movies are, you could watch those after you've seen those yeah, other And four. you know what, too? If you watch the other ones, you're going to know that the science officer is a, a, a robot, uh, whatever they call a replicant. Yeah. Because, again, they stole that thing. They just basically remade a shitty version of this twice. It's not that bad, but I can, I respect your... It I all goes back you. to... was it? We talked about Prometheus, the movie they planned to make, or was it Alien Covenant, the movie they planned to make, was the movie they should have made? I just kept yes. harping. Like, if they yeah. would have just done that, it would have been so much better. Dude, Correct. so many times. I'm sick of Chris telling us, or the... Popcorn Priest, I'm sick of you telling us what they were thinking about doing with Rambo. I want to see them in the Arctic hunting down some crazy monster. It's true. I want to see all these things, but anyway. I mean, we we all want to see the engineer's planet. We all want to see yeah. where the aliens come from, and we'll probably never get to see that. No. Nope. Just sad. They're never going to make the one we wanted. Yeah. We were get we got we got close. We're good. We got there, but I think uh, Scott's going to go die. He's going to die. He's going to get a face hugger and die. He's going to take it, take it to the grave. Yeah. Well. I'm excited for the next one. Yeah. Aliens. Aliens. That sucked. <laughs> I just cut it right off. Yeah, Aliens is going to be great. We have to watch that at my house. How many more till she shaves her head? 
two. Two more. Okay. Two more? Two in more. The, in two more. And two more. In the third one. The Not third next one, one, but the one Third after. one is Bald Ripley. Yeah. Dude, and the third one, is that the mech? No, that's, that's two. That's two. Oh, it's so aliens oh with an S. It's plurals. So excited. Well, with that, hit me up on the Twitters or the Instas if you want to interact with the great Popcorn Priest at Popcorn Priest. I respond to every tweet, post, comment, hashtag, and whatever else there is. Let us know if there's something you'd like us to review. Also, if you've enjoyed this or any of our previous episodes, please subscribe so you can get notifications on our newest episodes. Also, I've created a Patreon account if you like this. Just do it. Just He spends a lot of time, Donate. people. Give- it's a dollar. <laughs> Are you too broke to give this man a dollar a month? And I'm giving things away. If you go to patreon.com forward slash popcorn priest, I give some cool things away if you if you really want to help I'm doing it. Help I out pay him a dollar a month, people. Come on. So, much appreciated. I'm not sold yet. <laughs> I'm going to subscribe for Angry Dane. Two bucks a month for me. Well, get ready for next week as we continue this 12-part series of the Alien and Predator franchises with Aliens from 1986. Yes. Brought to you from our good friend, Jimmy Cameron. As always, thanks for listening. This has been Should You Watch This with the Popcorn Priest. And for Angry Dane. Yep. And Dr. Dare. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. <laughs>